Okay, we get a question from Immediate Suite 40338. You are a right footed, right winger. You want to um, improve your your vision and and improve some your agility and as well as um, you want to get to a point where you could be, you know, use skill moves effortlessly in games and um, basically just in increase vision, right? So um let's start okay so the first thing the first thing is you know you kind of want to lay a foundation that you're going to set up right this this is a foundation for all the kind of all this this like you know we could we could work on we could work on ball mastery and ball mastery um, we could work on dribbling sequences and we could work on barrel game 1v1 stuff right but if you're not if if you know and we could work on you know strength we could make it so that you are the most athletic on the field you know those things are very accomplishable and we could even you know invest in your mindset where you're doing all the right things you're showing up maybe a little bit early to juggle you're showing up a little bit late if you have any more juice in the tank after games or after practices you know we could make it so that maybe you're using some games if you're not starting to get some touches right so we we could we could we could talk about mindset stuff we could talk about how you could start taking a, a perpetual soccer vacation which means bringing a ball with you everywhere you go and we could talk about using a kick trainer you know kind of all all day or whenever you have whenever you've got a little bit of time to yourself and we could talk about how an rmt rope learning the alternating underhand sneak kind of ties everything together. Um, but the thing that I really is getting me really excited these days is talking about um, the five pillars, right? Andrew Huberman talks about the five pillars and the five pillars are sleep, um, hydration, nutrition, um, sunlight, sunlight and movement, right? Um, sunlight and movement and the fifth one being relationships so i have here briefly written down some immediate actions to take um but th you know one of the after this video if you've got time or whenever you do have time to check out andrew huberman put in andrew huberman tim ferris on youtube and just or just just search that online and and spend spend that you know, it's a two hour, two hour plus, you know, two and a half hour long podcast, but it's worth every single second because what Andrew Huberman's sharing with everyone is that if you don't invest in these five simple things every day, then you are going to be performing at not your best, Right. So simple things, you know, you could not you could check off. the You, you need to check these boxes off every single day. Right. Because this is going to set this is going to set the table for all the soccer stuff. Right. For the strength, for the mindset, for the, you know, the training. So but it's it's the players who take these for granted, who think they could out train. You know, you can out train simple principles and you, you got to start with the principles right because then you're going to set yourself up for success so i have just you know just a quick synopsis of the three-hour podcast and that the, my takeaways are if you want to start a, i think the, the fastest way to start changing your life is investing more into your quality of sleep and the way to do that is taking a hot shower or a hot bath before bed simple right the last 10 minutes of your day and the first 10 minutes of your day super important you go to sleep, you get great sleep, then you're waking up with a lot of energy. Then immediately from waking, since you've been in a state of fasting from from food and water, you want to wake up and immediately hydrate with water, pinch of salt, some lemon, right? Look, I just woke up, boom, water, salt, lemon. Then you want to hop in a shower, two minute cold shower. And, you know, we won't go into the science behind why this is super effective at jump starting your you know you, you want to ride that lightning of wake of going to sleep now you got great sleep then you want to you kind of magnify that you kind of multiply that energy with the cold shower um 
it's going to get your breathing going. It's just good for preventing, you know, st- prevents you from getting sick. Uh, it, it, it can help with, um, it just, you know, it shreds you out. You'll feel just more energized. You'll feel calmer. I notice I, I was, I've, I feel calmer throughout the day after taking a cold shower. And then immediately after that, you're getting a five to 10 to 15 minute walk, depending on your time, you know, on your time, you know, depends how much time you have, right? And because, you know, some people have obligations, some people have tight schedules, right? You kind of, but you kind of want to have to, um, you want to get outside and you want to get in the sun and you want to get moving because this is going to set an internal timer in your brain. It's going to set a sleep timer, right? Just seeing that light is going to set your kind of your, your rhythms. And it's super important to do this, right? Because what, what does this look like if you don't do it well? Like the people who wake up, they're on their phones, they're lying in bed. You know, the first thing they're doing is drinking coffee in the morning, right? Like that's what the opposite of this looks like. Um, lying in bed, you know, you, you're, you haven't really woken up to start the day if you're not getting hydration, sunlight, and movement. Um, so those are super important. And then th- my new habit is very right, like sort sort my body sort my body out so that now my mind is is feeling excellent and then it's the last one is relationship relationship i think the fastest way that you could start to f- feel good about yourself because the way that you treat all the relationships in your life is really a, f- a reflection of how you treat yourself right if you treat yourself to the high standard and are forgiving and encouraging um I think this starts with simple thing like cleaning your room, making your bed, and like just just maybe getting the your clothes sorted out the the night before you know the night before the the um, the night before right just lay your clothes out so it's one less thing to think about and you're not you know wasting time and energy with what am I gonna wear you already have it sorted so now you're organized and then you can be an effective person slash player, right? So spend some time, check this one out. This has changed my life in the past two weeks. So this is a big one. Okay, that's, let's assume that you spent some time taking care of that. Okay, Um, let's talk about mindset. I think that's a fun one. If you, uh, you know, my question is, have you read the book Atomic Habits by James Clear? I think this lays down the foundation of why daily daily habits and daily practices slash rituals are super important to developing not only your long term, you know, not, not only helping you achieve some short term and long term goals, but helping you harness the power of very tiny habits and also maybe ending some some poor habits. <clears throat> what those are, I'm not sure. But it's just a book that really clarified my thinking at becoming a more um I'm becoming a more more um effective uh, person to be honest um you know Muhammad Ali he trained he trained all day 6 days a week right so um i think some people some players they don't have a model for what perpetual perpetual training looks like um, like that it's, that it's literally that it's okay socially to be bringing a ball with you everywhere you go. Um, right. So that's why I have written down here, soccer vacation, right? So you kind of want to have this Muhammad Ali mindset where all day, no matter where you are, you have an RMT rope that you're swinging with you. You're using a kick trainer or you have a soccer ball with me, with you, right? I, you know, I literally do these all the time whenever I'm going for a walk whenever I'm going even to the grocery store I'm bringing an RMT rope right I'm swinging this I'm swinging this thing all all freaking day I'm getting touches all down in kick trainer or I'm dribbling and juggling everywhere I go and that's like an effortless mindset right so other effortless other effortless ways you can improve your vision and improve your dribbling um are showing up a little bit early or staying late, right? If you've already made the trip to the field, if you got more juice in the tank, I think showing up a little early really helps you set the tempo and and gets you out of your head and into the ball. And this is going to make it so that 
right? Even if you showed up five to 10 minutes early and started juggling, that's like a thousand more touches that, than you're getting than your whole entire team. So, right, if you're juggling 60 seconds in 20 minutes, you'll have, that's 12, that's 1200 touches, give or take, right? So juggling is a huge, you know, talk about vision. Juggling is gonna completely change the way that you, your first touch, which is gonna get, allow you to get your head up better and it's gonna improve your vision tremendously. So showing up a little bit early is gonna help, is gonna give you time to juggle, which is gonna give you the vision that you need in theory, and it's gonna change your life. So this one's a big one. Um, if you're not starting, this is something that in college, right? There was many games, you know, like I didn't start maybe till sophomore year, sophomore or junior year even. Like I started some games sophomore, maybe one or two games sophomore year, but you know, even as a, even at four years in college, I could have, I could have, used games as practices right because think about it if you're on a bench if you're on the bench what's your job your job is to be mentally and physically prepared as possible so that if someone gets injured on the field or coach wants to make a change you are ready so you'll find that people spend 90 minutes sitting down and that's time they could have used like in 90 minutes you can get 100 100 divided by 20 20 divided 20 you could be getting 1000 uh close to 6000 touches a full game if you got 90 minutes or using a kick trainer um this is just time that you could use as an opportunity to imp- you know spend time juggling and improve your vision right um the last thing i just want to throw in there is that you know for for mindset is that whenever you're riding a bicycle you could just improve you know get outside improve your um, your endurance, your stamina, and it's also I just think it's therapeutic riding your bicycle around. Um, but you know, some people, some people don't have a bicycle, or some people don't um, are, you know, it's not safe where they are, or just it's not ideal. So you know, I just want to throw that out there. If we talk about, right, I want to talk about strength because y- you want to you know build up optimal strength. You want to build up optimal strength so that you can um, prevent injuries, right? Louis Simmons says 11 strong kids versus 11 weak kids. 11 strong kids are, kids are gonna win every time. So seven postures, Kador Zayani, you gotta check this guy out on YouTube. This is gonna help you um, improve your sitting, right? He's gonna show you p- stretch, stretches, a couple war- stretches to warm up. He's got a book out. I bought the book, the book's changed my life. Um, but he, he's got lots of videos on YouTube. You could just find these seven postures on YouTube. These are uh, game changing. Another game changer for me was Dr. Vranich breathing. This is a 10 minute Ted talk. You got to check that out, right? Think about, you could go three days, 10 minutes. You could go three days, uh, without food or water. You could go for three hours in an unhospitable environment. You could go three minutes holding, uh, trying to hold your breath, right? So breathing, super important. If you don't know, if you're not, if you don't know how to belly breathe, this is a, a revelation. Then strength, strength, right? Hanging. If you don't spend any time hanging from a pull-up bar or a tree or an overhang, a ledge, anything like that, something that's going to help you use gravity to align and decompress your spine. This is an effortless way to build strength in your hands. Right, think about how strong monkeys are. All they do is hang, they're hanging, they're squatting, and they're playing with their monkey friends. So hanging is super important. You want to start to turn this into a daily habit, a few minutes of hanging a day. I think Edo Portal says you want to aim for seven minutes pa- hanging passively every single day. Another Edo Portal uh, YouTube video you want to check out. This is, takes maybe two, two minutes, two to three minutes. Squat Clinic. Search Squat Clinic Edo Portal, another great warm up that's going to help you build strength, prevent injuries, make you stronger, stronger on the ball, off the ball. Uh, tied into this one, tied into, you know, warm up, or think about kind of warm up and strength. Dmitry Klokov, 2014. This is another two minutes, right? So it may seem like a lot. It's really not that much. It's, re- it's really not. 
two minutes. I want you to, um, so this is an easy one. You just watch it, monkey see, monkey do, and check that one out. ROKP, Ben Patrick. ROKP stands for reversing out of knee pain, but it's deep. it goes deeper than just knee pain. It's, it's actually a full body rehab, prehab tool because walking backwards, it, it prevents, right? It actually sets your foot up in a position that strength, strengthens your toes, which strengthens your uh, ankle and, and Achilles, which strengthens your calf and so on and so on, right? So this is really a full body, right? Just understand the concept of ROKP and, um, and then you can, right? What, whatever gym has a treadmill, you could start doing uh, walking for a warm up five minutes in reverse, 10 minutes in reverse, or when you get to a soccer field, a simple warm up walking backwards the full length of the field for two times and it may look it may look you know funny people be like oh why are you walk backwards but you know if if, if you're going to prevent injuries if you this is like the smartest way to prevent in full body injuries and get yourself warmed up um i forgot to write one i forgot to write locomotion Check out locomotion as well for warm up. This is basically a strength warm up. Right, strength warm up. Um, locomotion by Edo Portal again. Right, we have we have him here hanging. We have him squat clinic and locomotion. Right, this guy, Edo Portal. He's one of the best movers of our generation. Right, if you're and you got to be able to move effectively on the field. So. I've also noticed this locomotion warm up. When I do this before games, people watch me warm up like this, and they respect my it like it raises my respect on the ball when I go to play soccer. So like it's so intimidating when you do this locomotion warm up that players will literally fear you on the field, and you will get respect even before the game starts it's hard it's hard to describe but that's this is what i noticed that's how powerful this locomotion warm-up is um the last question i i want to have is or i have a view is are you are you using minimalist shoes or are you getting the most bang for your buck when you're doing all this training or are you going barefoot um a quick story i i ordered a pair of minimalist shoes and i went for a a short jog on a treadmill and the next day I remember you know I remember this story like it was yesterday I was so sore the next day right my calves were so sore that I could hardly walk and what this told me is that that minimalist shoes allowed my ankle to have a greater range of motion which started making my calves so sore but since it made my calves sore I realized that the shoes that I was wearing before restricted my range of motion and that I had weak calves, so now the minimalist shoes were helping me become stronger from the ground up. So every step that you could take, it could make you stronger, it could make you weaker. So, you know, this is such an effortless thing to change your shoes that it could really um, create, right? A lot of people are talking about longevity into old age, and you want to be very strong in your feet and in your ankles, right? That's the first contact point that your body shares with the ground. So, um, I think this is not something, you know, to take lightly. Minimalist shoes have changed my life and have a, a reason why I've been, you know, I'm I'm 32 years old. I'm 10 years out from playing college soccer and I'm, I'm 10 times the player that I was in college with the help of these things. So I think, you know, minimalist shoes is something that I'd consider heavily. Okay, now let's talk about ball mastery uh, and, and, and technical training um we kind of have two we have we have active we have we have active and we have passive training right both are important right i think both can be effortless i think your soccer vacation should be perpetual so whenever you're walking around you're going to do right you're either swinging a rope you're using a kick trainer or you're dribbling or juggling Right, so in all these ways, you're actually improving. These, this is like effortless. You should be doing these all the time to a point where you're not even thinking about doing it. And what this is gonna allow you to do is that when you get to the to go 
work on your technical ball skills. I'm talking about ball mastery, dribbling sequences, and, and your barrel game. This is like I've played hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of all this stuff, right? I've spent 10,000 plus hours doing all these things. So you actually want to start a, a ball mastery habit, a dribbling sequence habit, and a barrel game habit. And this could mean, you know, you could start and this whole thing could take five minutes, right? That's nothing. You could do that. So ball mastery, you want to choose, doesn't matter which one you choose, or, or you could investigate all of them. All of these are different resources to take your ball mastery to the next level with a, with a few minutes of practice a day, right? And because... As you start to learn more ball mastery moves, you're going to start to stack, right? They're going to st start stacking on each other, especially that you've laid the foundation. If you've laid the foundation, now you're getting great, you know, you've hit the five pillars. Uh, now, and, and you've given yourself a strength and movement foundation. This is like easy, right? Because, because it's just, this is just like downloading this to your operating system and you already have the right hardware, strength, strength and movement, and you've already got the right mentality um, with effortless training. And, and you know, so if you if, if all those things, if you've invested in all these, and this is like, this is the cherry and the, you know, the whipped cream on top. So for five minutes a day, you can, you can, right, you could invest in a dribble up, drop dribble up ball. This is if you like using technology to train. I've seen people getting great results with this ball. You could check out the free resource Cover Coaching on uh, YouTube or the App Store or Android. On Instagram, there's a guy named Fantas. There's a kid. I'm sorry. His name's Fantas Sista Mickey. Right? Can you see that? M I C K E E Y. Fantas Sista Mickey. He's this little. He's this little kid. His ball skills are unreal. So you could start to check out some of his. I guess I guess these this is actually a dribbling pattern. Right, so maybe I gotta put him in a different um dribble designer. This guy's a, a Japanese guy, but he's also has um you know, that's also gonna help you improve your ball mastery. So you could pick one, see one that you like, a style that you like, right? Dribble a ball if you got a little bit of cash, that could that might be an investment worthwhile. Um so you could spend two minutes, right? The the next time you have a little bit of practice to yourself or even before, you know, before you get to, um, if you're at practice and you're early, this is some stuff you could do. Then it's Tom Pernville dribbling sequence, right? With one foot, you go, you're saying it out loud when you're doing it. You go outside, outside, inside, outside, inside. All right, let me show you. Here, look, I got an onion. Here's my onion. Actually, I don't want to destroy this fruit. Right, Tom Turtle sequence. Outside, outside, inside, outside, inside. Outside, outside, inside, outside, inside. Again, outside, outside, inside, outside, inside. Right, two minutes of that. You're doing two minutes of that. You're saying it out loud. You're going slow in the beginning. And the last thing, barrel game. Barrel game. The barrel game is great because... You know, most soccer fields have a garbage can. It's also great because it's 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 measurable, right? Um, it's measurable in the sense that if you tell people, some players, they don't like to just juggle aimlessly. Some players aren't good at juggling um, for extended periods of time. So um, this allows you to constrain it right because you have to use your right foot then your left foot both feet alternating right thigh left thigh both thighs alternating and then you finish with any any part of the body that you want to juggle the ball 
into the barrel, right? So since I'm using a tennis ball, haven't warmed up yet, so I'll just you know give you an example. You can use whatever ball you want. You can start as close as you know as close as you want. You want to make it. You want to make skills easy, right? You want to make strength hard. You want to make skills easy. So make it easy for yourself to succeed because then then it becomes then you could start to challenge yourself more and more using different size balls, using a bounce, no bounce. So right thigh with a barrel looks like this, right? Just like that, so right, right foot, left foot, both feet alternating, right thigh, left thigh, both thighs alternating. And then if you mess up, then you just, you just pick your ball up and you walk a little bit, you know, you restart and then boom, hit it. And that could take, you know, a couple minutes. So those are the three things that you can do by yourself over and over and over. Um, there's this guy named Josh Waitskin. He's one of the best chess players of all time. He's like grandmaster at seven years old, eight years old. And he said, um, the key to being like, in summary, he says like, be, the key to being a high level player is mastering like some very few fundamentals. If you can, if you, if all you did was those three things, then the, then the next challenge would be, um, like this is what I did at Tom Turnbull's Skills and Drills Academy over and over and over. Every single session was ball mastery, dribbling sequences, barrel game, and the thing that is going to be hard to do by yourself is playing 1v1 against someone, right? All you need is two cones and you could set that up after practice, you and a partner, if you say, hey, like, you know, get, get some training partners or playing with parents, friends, family, knock each other's, knock each other's cone over with a ball, right? You're trying to knock my cone over, I'm trying to knock your cone over. But that's what our, that's what our practices would look like. So this is why I'm trying to show you exactly what helped me go from the worst player on my team to then being the leading goal scorer, more goals than the whole team combined. Um, but like, I didn't know any of this stuff. I didn't know about the five pillars. I didn't know about, you know, all this strength and movement and warm up stuff. So, you know, you gotta learn from all my mistakes. I've been playing this game for 27 years and I can't wait to learn more and share more. So, um, um, take immediate action, right? And I hope, I hope this helps and uh, reach out with any more questions, all right? But, right, the dribbling sequences, juggling. Not all the best, not all the best soccer players, I'm sorry, not all the best jugglers are the best players, but all the best players are the best jugglers. So you gotta improve juggling and you gotta improve dribbling. Those are the two most important things because juggling is like passing and shooting. So, right, the fundamentals of soccer, all players have to do dribbling, juggling, passing, and shooting. But since juggling is passing and shooting, that means the things you wanna focus on the most, ball mastery, dribbling sequences, and juggling, and your vision is going to um, improve tremendously. So um, reach out with any more questions. All right, thank you.